Hello and welcome. The goal of this podcast is to get listeners connected with others in the sports industry because they say it's all about who you know, and now you know us. All right, hello and welcome, guests. This is uh, episode 36, I believe. We have a longtime co host, Mr. Salvatore Capri, today. I'm your host, Connor Shank, and we're excited to bring you another episode of the Constant Sports Podcast. And today we're really just going to kind, kind of dive into the sports world, do some recaps on the NFL season, uh, maybe the combine, arguably the worst trade in NFL history went down two years ago and kind of came to a con- conclusion today, which we will talk to. I'll talk about a little bit. We'll talk about some MLB, March Madness, um, things like that. So, uh, so I want you to get us started. What's uh, what have you been up to these days? What's your world looking like? Yeah, no, appreciate you having me on, Connor. You know, I always uh, love joining the platform. You do such a great job giving everyone insights into the sports industry and kind of the current news that's been going on. So, oh, always glad to join the show and kind of uh, dive in with you. So. You know, just business as usual, busy season. So working away, you know, the sports industry never stops. It's always new, fresh, fresh content coming or news popping out. So just trying to keep up with everything and and growing. Yeah, of course. And and for the viewers or listeners who maybe aren't familiar with your work, um, where where are you at? What what are you doing for for the first 10 viewers? A little insight on kind of your day to day. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do just a quick overview since I know. Uh, if people have listened, I've been on and and, and I've definitely explained what I've done, but working in the high school marketing industry, specifically with Teal Properties Group, uh, I'm located out here in the, the North Carolina region. So do, doing a, a lot of work there, specifically kind of facilitating, building out all our contracts, uh, helping with the sales operation side of it, as well as the fulfillment of our sponsorship agreement. So kind of the partnership services side specifically kind of the activation. So a little bit of everything is kind of how I like to do things. Yep. Yep. Just how we like it. And speaking of a little bit of everything, we ran a poll today on some of our social channels and whatnot. And the poll was for those who didn't see it, it was which professional sports league do you believe will face the most disruption in the next decade? So this is kind of topic one we're going to go over. Um, so once again, which professional sports league do you believe will face the most disruption in the next decade? And the poll broke down as such, 48%. Uh, we had over 100 respondents, so 48% was MLB, then 24 was NFL, 18 was NBA, and then 9% was other um, other leagues, obviously, rugby, WNBA, things of that nature. So um, that's kind of there. Um, so what do you think? The MLB is the high there. I mean, it was a little higher than I thought up the, as far as the display, really? 48% yeah. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Very, very not shocked on the results, to be honest. Uh, definitely could see MLB being that uh, as they've already kind of are facing a lot of disruption. And, you know, MLB is the pastime sport of America. Uh, a lot of fans are over the age uh, uh, of a specific number of older gentlemen just because mm-hmm. it's been such an old sport. So MLB baseball is rooted in history. And, and it's been a sport that has not adapted as well or has been open to adapting as the other sports so it, it to be able to stay with the market and keep up within the sports industry it's going to face challenges and it's going to have to come to the reality that their changes will be made and they are last year was a big year for the mlb and making changes and seeing the results of that but i i only think it's the beginning for the mlb i will tell you where i'm shocked on this poll result is that the nba was lower than the nfl mm-hmm. I think the NFL is king right now, as you can tell with its TV results and and how it just continues to grow. So right now, I think the the NFL is in a great spot. And uh, I'm obviously all sports leagues deal with disruption and have to be able to adapt. But I feel like the NBA is going to be more uh, facing issues than the NFL, specifically the the all star game and kind of how they how the league is player driven, which is great. But to keep the audience intrigued with the sport, I think there's going to be disruption in the NBA. Yeah, of course. And just touching on the, the MLB aspect there, I just yeah. was looking up some different sites on uh market side and the MLB released some polls, but it says their average uh, fan is 43 years old with ticket buyers go. and things like that. And, um, you know, those watching at home. Um, so, you know, I think they tried a little bit too you know, with, with with the pitch clock last year, 
try to shrink the game time down. But, right. you know, I, I'm a big baseball fan here. I, I mean, 182 games is a good amount, I will say. It's it's a good amount of games. You know, I mean, as a Padres fan here, I guess I can't call myself a diehard if I don't watch all 182 games. But I'll watch <laughs> the first month and a half. And then, you know, once it's like April, May, it just fades. Like, you turn up in July, and then I'm dialed in. So I think that's kind of one of their – one of the biggest issues, and I'm not sure how they're going to combat that. And a few players have come out. I know the Anthony Rendon came out and said, like, we got too many games, and a few other people have come out. But obviously their, their biggest, I guess, problem would be the potential loss of regional broadcasting revenues and whatnot with Valley Sports and all that. So um, that, that, that'll that hurt them even more. But I'm sure, they're, I'm sure the big uh, the big dogs over there will figure it out eventually. No no doubt about that. And obviously, what I mean, the season hasn't even begun, and – uh, I, I'm gonna just say it as it as it is because it's been which is wild to me. I, I'm surprised we're about to have this conversation, and people in the industry know where I'm going with this. Is the uniforms for the MLB yeah. have been the biggest storyline? I've never yeah. seen anything like it, Connor. Yes. I'll tell yeah. you what. The I mean, this is the professional baseball league. Like this is premier, premier. <laughs> and we can't even get the uniforms right. No, I don't well, know what we're doing here. Well, see, uh, if you put on, you know. <laughs> Maybe maybe a uh, uh, I forget what the marketing tactic is, but it's basically bad publicity is good publicity. What if they just it's just a marketing ploy, and they're like, here, give us the jerseys. We're gonna put out just a horrendous product. Everyone's gonna be talking about it. Our numbers are gonna go through the roof because now everyone's talking about the jerseys. Everyone's taking pictures. They're posting online. I mean, <laughs> fanatics and every and, and MLB jerseys is is one of the hot topics right now. So that, that that never gets lost on me is like, you know, is this some sort of marketing ploy? Are we being played? Um, something to think about. I mean, maybe I'm too uh, oh, in the no. weeds here, but it, I just, that's kind of the first thing I thought was, because they're just, they're too bad to, like, there's no way that was the final product in my opinion. Right. I'll tell you which one got me was the, the MLB player for Seattle, the Mariners, I believe, posted the photo, tagged the Fanatics, hey, jersey's a little messed up and the fanatics account goes hey let us know where to send a, a proper jersey update well you're responding to an mlb player <laughs> yeah. not not just some random fan to my locker yeah yeah so that was real good so but no obviously never overlooked uh there's no uh, there's not afraid to have bad publicity because it gets publicity on your company but I don't know that that's wild to me, but overall, uh, I think uh, with the MLB having the all one of the best All Star games, mm -hmm. the, they'll make it through. But I do believe they will have the most disruption to deal with. I believe the like I was detailing earlier, the NBA second, and then NFL third, and, and from there, I uh, kind of other with nine percent come in and on the poll it is not surprising one bit to me. Yeah, well, and it is interesting. We ran a poll a few weeks ago about who had the best All Star game, and it was actually the MLB people voted on having the best All Star game, yeah. which um, I mean, that makes sense because it's the most like the game of any sport bar none because they're actually right. playing the game. Um, yeah. So there's there's that, um, and um, I don't know any any last words on there before we dive into the NFL here. No, I'm good. I, I what a turnout. You can already yeah. see the the audience and group of people you're impacting. So great to see that number of people that voted on the polls. Oh just yeah, no, increasing uh, every week. Yeah, no, we love it. We love the fan engagement, uh, getting people yes. involved. And um, speaking of fan engagement, we're gonna do a little special episode here where Sal, as a lifelong Broncos fan, he is going to be a, a mock GM for us and kind of break down maybe some of his his picks, what what his thoughts are for the upcoming season as as a general manager. Sal just um. I think the team today actually released. They're moving on from quarterback Russell Wilson. And um, there's a lot of naysayers and, and, and critics in the weeds over here chirping that this is arguably the worst uh, trade of all time. So, Sal, as the acting GM, kind of what are your next moves going forward for the Bron Broncos faithful? Yeah, no, it's it, – I think Broncos country can buckle right up. This one is going to be wild. Uh, as you detailed earlier, just released Russell Wilson will be released next week. It'll be an $85 million cap hit spread over two years, depending on how it works out. And obviously depending on what number he signs with for, with another team, all accounts is that he's projected to take the league minimum, make sure the Broncos pay his full salary so that we don't get any cap relief there, but we'll, we'll see what happens. 
Next moves, uh, you probably have to draft a quarterback, to okay. be honest with you, just because, yeah, the market for quarterback price-wise, you just won't really have the salary cap. What I would do, and, and this is going to be a shock to people because first instinct is, hey, trade up, get the get the best quarterback you can, get to the highest draft position you can. You don't have the assets to do that. Right. What I would do is I would trade down. I'd get more draft capital, get – later first round and then i'm either taking michael Penix jr or i'm taking bo nix how far how far, how far do you think they're dropping down i think late first round and then you, you take three, which three, one's three, available three four because you're probably going williams would probably go somewhere in there drake may has been kind of yeah. wiping up the boards but um yeah, you probably daniels get, yeah jay daniels you probably get maybe the fourth or fifth best qb in the first round maybe third and that's what people are thinking in, in my opinion Michael uh, Penix spun the ball the best, obviously, at the Combine. Let me make that clear for everybody. There, there's not a better thrower of the football in this draft than Michael Penix. Just the way, the spin of the ball, the placement, and you saw it, and everyone's already talked about, tell me the best game a quarterback played this college football season. What would be yours? The best game of college? I mean, really any game. I mean – any game Penix played against the Ducks, he torched them. Sorry, um, Callum. Yeah, Mr. Coleman. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, and this is all quarterbacks in and all games. Who who had the best performance at the quarterback position? I would say Penix, either game two, Oregon, um, or Texas. Yeah, Texas. That's what I was about to say. Penix versus Texas was the best game by a quarterback this year. So you're saying that. You're telling me. I could get him late first round, trade back, and get more draft capital. I think that's the way they go. Now, if he gets taken, you take that risk, and everyone, everyone's been saying Bo Nix fits perfectly into Sean Payton's offense. Interesting. I, lean, I, I, I don't know if I necessarily fully agree with that, but I still think it's worth it's worth taking one of those two versus then trading up and getting one of the big names. Yeah, I'm with you there. And then what do you guys are, what are you, 12 or 13? Depending if you stay where you're at, you're 12. Yep, you're 12. If you and stay then, where you are, yeah. I think I think you, you take a lineman, offensive lineman or a cornerback, and then you take a quarterback if in the third, fourth round, and, and the quarterback I would eye in that place would be Spencer Rattler, South Carolina. No, I've been hearing there yeah. have been a lot of reports coming out, especially out of the Senior Bowl, Reese's yes. Senior Bowl that that he 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 torched it up down there, and I know he went. Uh, where was he at Oklahoma? He came out of high school, right. highly touted. Went to Oklahoma. Yeah, it's uh, an Arizona Peter kid Williams. now. Yep, yep. Pinnacle High School. Yes, the Scott yes. the Greater Scottsdale area. That's um, correct. And uh, yeah, he I liked him at South Carolina. Played well, I think. Um, from the kind of the reports and things I read, he had a pretty banged up old line. So especially in college, that that puts you behind the eight ball. You know if. You're, especially in the SEC, if you don't have an offensive line and you're going against the Georgias and the Alabamas, your stats aren't going to be, you know, where they need to be. So, yeah, I think I'd, I'd like that. I'd like that move there. That'd be a, that'd be a sneaky. It's kind of like a Dak Prescott four, five, six years ago, whatever that was. Right. Him in the mid round quarterback, kind of beef up some of your team needs, and then get a get a reliable quarterback that you think you could, uh, you know, have a future with. No, absolutely, and that's. I, I do anticipate Denver to u- utilize the draft to get their quarterback just because of cap wise. But like I was saying uh, to start this whole conversation, I anticipate multiple veterans being released, multiple veterans being traded to get more draft capital. I, I expect the Denver Broncos to be getting a lot younger and a lot cheaper uh, at a lot of positions, unfortunately. But uh, with their performance the last five years, they're not a winning team. This mm-hmm. is what you got to do. Would you call this and, a rebuild year? To be on, potentially, yes, for sure. This is not a good football team, Connor. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be honest with you. This is not a good football team, and and from what I saw, I think it's the right move. I I know it's tough uh, as you got listed here. Just break it down for everyone. Not my words, Connor's words. The worst trade in NFL history: the Denver Broncos trading two first rounds. Picks two second round picks, Drew Locke, Noah Fant for Russell Wilson, then proceeding to sign him to a guaranteed 
a massive deal. And, and from there, he will not even get, he did not even make it to the re renewal of his agreement. Right. Because well, the first I, two I, years, oh, go ahead. You know, keep going. You're good, you're good. I was just going to say his first two years in Denver, he was playing on the old Seattle contract. Yep. So this was actually going to be the first year of which he was going to play on the extension that the Denver Broncos gave him. So he did not even make it to that. 100 and what is it? 165. 65, Russell Wilson. Wilson will begin from the Denver Broncos for 30 games played, losing record. Uh, there was a point in season one when he had more bathrooms in his home than he had touchdown passes. So. I do remember the stat. That was a great stat. Um, whoever whoever dug that up, that was beautiful. And and I do believe the eighty five million dollar dead cap is the highest to date. I think Matt Ryan was was up there in the fifties or sixties somewhere. Um, um, he, you're one hundred percent accurate on that. And the top three to date combined do not equal oof. that of Russell Wilson. That's it tough. is. It's going to be rough. Now, our hope is that he does go and says, hey, I'm a top dog. I'm going to get a three, four-year deal guaranteed locked in so I can solidify with the team, which would be great. Everyone's writing this guy off, saying he's going to take the league minimum. I would hope and, and I, I would not be shocked if, say, the Vikings, say the Falcons, Cut, sign yeah, him to, to a four-year deal, $40 million a year, whatever rent or standard rate is. And then from there, that will subsidize what we have to pay him. Right. Well, but, and just and just um just just like you're saying, I think there's plenty of teams. I mean, kind of a bridge quarterback. quarterback. I mean, the com the Commanders I would put in that category. Depending I agree. upon, I mean, the Jets are QB shopping, and who knows with with uh, Aaron Rodgers, Achilles, how that's going down. I mean, correct. There's this quarter. There's, there's right. homes for people. There, there's homes for people, but we need to make sure it's more than one million dollars. Yeah, Russell Wilson. That's yeah, that's gonna hurt. Mm. Now, I was just looking at the schedule here. You guys, um, some home games. Home schedule is not too bad. I mean, you got the Falcons, Panthers, Colts, Chiefs, w -W -W. Chargers, w -W. Raiders, Steelers, Browns. I mean, that's not terrible. Your away schedule is no. a little dicey. You got the Chiefs, obviously, division opponent. Uh, Chargers, Raiders. Then looks like you got the what is this, the the Bucks, Saints. Seahawks, Jets, Ravens, and Bengals. So I feel home, your home schedule and with mile high, I feel like you guys always kind of compete up there. So I feel like you could you could get some of those out. But um, I feel like we we've we've uh, covered the Broncos and, and the Russell Wilson situation uh, to to a good extent here. Are there any other uh, new NFL news or kind of season wrap ups? As um, obviously the I guess the league starts the new season. You could say starts here in the next two weeks. Anything that caught your eye? or that you want to touch on? No, not necessarily. Like you said, we're getting into the fun part of the season. Free agency officially, well, legal tampering, as they call it, starts in less than a week now. So that's basically when free agency will begin. So we'll get a lot of answers on, on what teams, friend, or teams rosters look like. From there, the draft to kind of plug in the pieces. I think the big note on that is obviously the salary cap increasing by what it did. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I think it was a 30 to $40 million increase from the previous year. One of the highest in mm -hmm. NFL history. Not surprised. The, this, the, this is kind of the full effect from the uh, previous media rights agreements finally kicking in. So uh, that was big time. That's going to help a lot of teams. And, and I think we're going to have an interesting off season with lots of, lots of movement. But before we kind of review on that, you want to touch on the combine, what we just saw last weekend? Uh, yeah. So I think, uh, there are a few people that, you know, I think Caleb, Caleb Williams, a few others that um, didn't, I guess, participate. Well, yeah, but, yeah. Talk to me about the med not him saying no medicals. First player to ever do that. Yeah. I, you know, it, it, in one way, it's kind of obviously concerning, right? Because it's like, if I was a team and I said, hey, Sal, we're going to, we're possibly going to draft you. What are your thoughts on, you know, us checking out kind of the medicals, your body, how's everything going? I would think that'd be a little bit concerning because you don't want to get an asset essentially, you know, a player put money into this player and then, Oh yeah, they've had a, they have a hamstring issue that that's going to be a problem. And then you lose that. Um, so I'm not sh sure the root, but I guess the upside is kind of what I was trying to think of. The upside is I'm good. I don't need to do a medical. It's a waste of time. Um, I, well, yeah, and he's going no agent, which, which, yeah. you know, for the first pick first rounders, it's all slotted anyway. So that's not too big of an right. issue. 
And um, a lot of players are doing that where, you know, these draft slots are already slotted. So you don't really need someone to negotiate. Uh, I, I guess the numbers, it's more the language. Uh, a lot of, a lot of players are just doing the lawyer route where it's an hourly yeah. rate instead of the percentage. So that the no agent doesn't, I guess, surprise me as much as um, the no medical, no testing, that thing. Um, you know. well, well, Connor, you know, not all 32 teams can draft them. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and I heard he uh, said no dice to Chicago as well. I don't know if that, that was, um, I don't know. I didn't hear that. that. Okay. But what I, I also heard, obviously, outside of the comment uh, of not all 32 teams can draft me, was that he was going to be doing medicals at the teams that he thought was going to draft him. So from all indications, that means he would do the medical when he went and visited Chicago. But it's interesting the mm -hmm. way he's doing it. But like you said, I mean, these kids with the NIL, they already got the money. They don't need, because because what you're talking about, the in the new generation uh, of kind of how the draft is laid out with the the number already slotted in based on when you're selected uh, and what I mean the number your salary and kind of your contract is already slated based right. off of the uh, pick you're selected with so that's already taking care of everything basically what you hire the agent to do is kind of help facilitate the process the combine process yep. so kind of. Uh, a lot of these players will hey, pay for my training, pay for my housing, pay for all this pre-draft, pre-contract, and then on the back end, I'll pay you back. Yep. Well, when you're Caleb Williams and you got an NIL money and you already can cover all that easily, why why go into debt, if you will, and have an agent cover all that when you could just pay it up front and then you don't have to pay for it on the back end by having to give an agent a percentage of that second ultimate big contract that you get in the NFL. Exactly. So, I mean, that makes sense you know, yeah. you know, on that, on that front, but um, the, well, I guess the biggest news out of the combine was the, uh, the receiver from Texas ran a four, <clears throat> make sure I guess right. Four, two, one, Xavier, four, really two, one. four, two, one, which is that's moving. I mean, you're getting from point A to point B rather quickly. So that that's always impressive. I do think a lot of the combine is kind of just a show. I don't, I don't know oh, how yeah. much of how much of it's actually, applicable um obviously you got like the broad jump the three cone kind of makes sense vertical but i mean oh linemen running 40s i mean that's the last time they're sprinting for a long while right you know, well they're it's impressive these are big men is. flying uh i'll tell you obviously the the texas receiver i mean that's moving that's that's world-class speed 165 though that's how much he that's, weighs that's the weight that's the weight it's concerning um, the last person to run a, a sub four two two four two one, Mr. Ross. John Ross, uh, did not pan out well in the NFL. So just context, people. Some of the people that jumped off the table for me, uh, Penn State Chop Robinson. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I knew you couldn't go a show without bringing in a Penn State football player, but keep. It I mean, let, let me give a shocker. People, a Penn State player performed at the combine, tested well. Uh, that's where the water is different in Happy Valley, and he just made himself a top fifteen pick. The receivers star studded. Uh, I'll tell you one that I just, I mean, this I, I watched him play in person. The dude's a freak. Xavier Leggett from South Carolina, okay. six three. I think he went four 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 three. I mean, ball he can catch anything. It, it's insane. The receivers are loaded, so yeah. I, I think people are going to be a little shocked, but. You would think, obviously, Marvin Harrison and a couple are going to be top top five picks, top ten picks. But, like, I think they're going to be spread, uh, delayed, just because there's so many. Why waste such a high pick on a first-rounder when you can get a position that's not as a depth? When you can go receive, you, you've got the pick of the litter. I mean, they're loaded. The receiver class is loaded. I think the offensive tackles are phenomenal as well. Another Penn State guy. Uh, Notre Dame guy, uh, Georgia guy, they're 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 all over. So, I, I think those would be my top combine standouts. I'm trying to think who else. The 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 North uh, Carolina State linebacker Peyton Wilson, he was moving. That that was big time. How about well, yourself? I'm I'm looking at um, it, I was I was like looking at the the big dogs taking a run. Um, mm -hmm. so Mr. Braden Fisk from Florida State, two sixty five. Oh, that was hit a uh four seven eight forty it's yeah that's I, that's fast dude i mean that's, that's, a, that's a big dude what was getting the, down the line 
Yeah, yeah. The Texas D tackle, 366, running like a 5251. Uh I have Byron Murphy. Let's see. I got I got I got I think Byron his, I thought Murphy. his name was Sweat. The best part is we all knew. Uh he's 297. Uh he ran, oh, he ran he ran a four eight seven. You think it's somebody it else? Here. Yeah, we got a Texas D tag. Oh, uh, Tavandre Sweat. Yeah, that's my guy. Five two seven. Five two seven. By 366 pounds moving this quick. I don't even know I can run a 5-2 at that, at my weight. This guy double me and yeah, said no, no problem. Well, and, and like you're saying, the, the combine can really, you know, take someone and drive their stock price up, so to speak, in, in, uh, in the NFL draft room. So, you know, that's only going to help him really because, I mean, sideline to sideline speed, spending from a defensive tackle, not, not I mean, it's not as important as linebackers say. But still, right. that's gonna help. That's gonna that's gonna play well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I, I guess that's it's kind of all the NFL new NFL, I guess, news, so to speak. Um, we mm-hmm. talked about it, but you know, viewership's up year over year yeah. increase, you know, the, the sour caps up. So that's all good news. Uh we got we got March Madness coming up. I know we have uh, Mr. Coolman. He's actually gonna join the show in a few weeks. Um, he's working out there. He's working some some kind of offense and things like that. So we won't yeah. dive too much into into what that that show is going to look like. But he's uh, he's knee deep over there, and um, I think I, I don't know too much about the college basketball space, but I feel like the March Madness is it's a really cool event. I guess as you see the mm-hmm. what is it 64, 68 teams nowadays. I feel like they're always sixty four, sixty four. Back in Phoenix as well. Our, yep. uh, as viewers are well aware, back. Back in our stomping grounds, it's going to be electric. There, there's nothing like March Madness. There really isn't. Well, and is the so the final four is there, and then is the is the championship there, or is it in Dallas? Correct. Nope, nope, should be there. Okay, gotcha. They'll play the final four games usually Friday or Saturday. Then the mm-hmm. national championship will be played the following Monday. Got it, got it. And it, it is interesting because they kind of have to do like these bidding, so to speak, and kind of present your package forward oh, to you know the committees, and they vote on it. And and that and and um, I guess Phoenix is just it's one of the better cities, sports cities. I mean, we had the Super Bowl there last year. We got the waste management. Got a lot of things going on there. Um, so that's that, that's I don't I don't have too much basketball insight there, but I, I do think that's going to be pretty cool. But staying in the yeah. college space, I do think yeah. there's been a lot of talk about these super leagues, so to speak, specifically for a football and basketball. Right. I've heard, I heard, I've heard a few different approaches where. You kind of do, you know, you let the top forty-eight teams in, you know, eight, 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 eight divisions, six teams, six teams, eight divisions, something like that, kind of like an NFC, AFC type of thing. Basically, wow. just build a uh, essentially a miniature version of the NFL. What are your thoughts on the maybe a super league in college football? You think teams are going to break off? What are your thoughts? Wow. Uh, uh, I'm. I don't. Know, it's it's wild to me, but like we've discussed with IL and everything, how how it's gone and proceeded with the teams, mm-hmm. uh, switching conferences, conference alignment. It's going to be interesting, and, and I think there's a lot of theories out there. I I will say what's telling of note is the SEC and Big Ten yeah. having that merger, not not merger. Excuse me. Let me let me phrase it properly. That kind of handshake agreement they're going to work together on things shows you that this is a potential Uh, i think it's clear the ncaa is in trouble yeah and and regarding college football if there isn't clear guidance and and clarity on the nil piece as well as kind of the structure uh, of how it's going to go there there may be a breakaway and kind of what you're alluding to with the with the super league between kind of the Big Ten being the NFC or AFC and vice versa with the SEC, we could really see that happening, which is, in my opinion is a little unfortunate. Uh, I do love college football for the heart of which it is played, and, and I do appreciate some of the matchups, kind of the financials of it with some of these other schools, kind of lower schools being able to play a bigger school and getting some finance from it. Uh, I right. think collegiate athletics and the space of college – is going to be completely different within the next five to 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I hope it's for the better, but I, I am nervous about the state of college sports. Right. Well, and that kind of 
kind of goes full circle to how we started the show with the one, maybe one of the pro leagues, right? That was the question, uh, having the biggest, you know, disruption in its league. But I think obviously college is going to see by far the biggest disruption, whether it's the two leagues, whether, you know, what sports, you know, kind of get back into the, which categories and regions. And I'm, I'm more of the belief that I, I like the regional aspect of things. Yes. Uh, you know, especially with, with the Pac-12 folding, if you will, with yeah. you, know, you got your women's softball team, your baseball team. I mean, they're over playing Rutgers. And, and these these sports are, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's just how these are structured every week. It's not like a football game, fly out, fly back. I mean, you got to right. come across, you got to go across the country. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's sustainable at all. I mean, a lot of these sports and, and athletic departments are already bleed money. Um, that's only going to make it worse. So uh, I like the I like the regional thing. I think you could get enough competitive teams in each region to um to make kind of a super league if that's one of the 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 ways they're going to go about it possible. And and if you think about it, if you let in forty eight teams, I, I feel like that's enough. I mean, you're oh, not going to yeah. be a top fifty team, you know, regularly competing for for a, for a spot. So I think you could get pretty much where you need to be um i do think i do like the relegation concept i don't know you know how practical that is but i do like that aspect of you know say like a vanderbilt no no hate but like if you haven't been good in forever just because you're in the sec doesn't mean you're automatically in i like the i like the concept of proving yourselves um like the european soccer soccer model rather um i, I do as well I think there's something i do as well yeah i do as well because then you weed out some of the the, the uh, how do I phrase it? I don't want to say junk or, or something like that, but just it, it keeps the competitive juices and fire there. Mm -hmm. It, it makes sure that it keeps the intentions in the proper place and, and it keeps things exciting. Yep. And, and there have been talks about the NFL kind of doing that with the, the XFL, XFL or USFL. Or so. Yeah, whatever they do, using that same model because there's always been talks about people uh tanking or trying to yep. lose games so if you want to do that well then you're going to be relegated mm -hmm. this is top of the top compete and that and that's all that's all people want to see the well, highest highest level of competitors competing at the highest level of sport mm -hmm. well and i have i have seen some reports might be not the right word but some some people talking where you have the nfl you have the x or ufl what they call it you have college football Essentially, you could you almost kind of already have these tiers forming, um, especially if if college kind of separates and makes super league, um, the, the employment status of them, all that. We'll keep that out of here for now. But there is kind of already a number of leagues that are being formed. You could say for this type of relegation to happen. I'm not saying it could happen or will happen, but the thought and concept. I mean, it is somewhat plausible in that it could. 10, 15, 20 years, you never know. Um, so it's something to think right. about. Agreed. And then um, I guess, so I don't know if you have, we're just kind of wrapping up here. I don't know if you want to close the show out with anything, leave our viewers uh, with any final thoughts as we uh, enjoy the rest of the week here. No, I really don't got nothing. Uh, again, always appreciate taking some time with you, Connor. You having me on the show discussing some of the big hitters in the in the sports industry and just chopping it up with you. It's so it's always great and, and a privilege to be on the show. Yeah, of course. You know, we always um I feel like we always have a good convos, talk sports. It's always a good time. Um thanks so thanks listeners and viewers for joining. So this is going to conclude another episode of the Constant Sports Podcast. Obviously a special shout out to Mr. Sal Capri to joining us today. Um, you, you can find this podcast where you listen to your podcast, Spotify, Apple, post this uh, video form on YouTube. We have a newsletter that runs, kind of just talks about uh, different sports industry, hot trends and topics and job openings in there. And uh, we when we frame these job openings, job applications are specifically from the people that we've had on the show. So you kind of have a vested interest in the person, in the company. Um, so for example, if TPG was hiring, not, not that they are, but if they were, um, Sal works there so you could kind of have a, a one connection point to the company so that's kind of the reasoning behind that um, and then we have different grad school programs we kind of have a comprehensive list of different grad school programs throughout the country from coast to coast north to north to south so feel free to check that out it's uh it's on our website and the links and things like that and Sal well I enjoyed the time today thanks again for uh stopping by and um we'll stay in touch my man hey appreciate it. you take care yep we'll talk soon